I'm gonna say something controversial about Capcom 1. No, I'm just kidding. It was awful. That and Ubisoft and, and Bandai Namco and just the entire thing in general because E3 was awful this year. I mean, where do we start? You had Microsoft and Nintendo who were probably the only ones trying. But then again, Microsoft was just being Microsoft. So pre pretty much a lot of announcements and only like two or three games worth mentioning which even then you had Starfield this is the year when they had Bethesda with them and they announced Starfield and it was just a cinematic trailer like come on give us gameplay obviously you had Halo Infinite that looked pretty cool Forza Horizon 5 looks awesome always Xbox always has the better driving game but then the lie of the exclusive we all know is just going to go on PC eventually because it's going to come on Game Pass and it you know, it was just Microsoft being Microsoft. I think a lot of people are just praising Xbox because it wasn't awful. Microsoft is sure looking good. Now, yeah, obviously it's going to look good. Then you had Nintendo, who announced pretty cool things like Super Monkey Ball remakes, Advanced War remakes, although I don't know what that is myself. I know a lot of people have been clamoring for that. But the two things that really stood out was Metroid Dread that looked really cool. And obviously the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. Those were the cool things that I saw in their presentation. But also just a standard presentation that in a regular E3, in comparison, if you compare it to a, a regular E3, these press conferences looks kind of standard. And this is why you watch, this is why you watch E3. You watch it for the game announcements and you watch it for the cringe. And because this year, all the video feeds were scripted, you didn't even have the cringe. What up, guys? Thank you for having me, EA. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Wellens, and I am a YouTube creator. So I am here to talk about Need for Speed um, Payback. Uh, if you guys didn't know Need for Speed Payback, I'm... Um, So you really didn't have any of like the YouTube cringy stars coming over, guest starring, product placement crap, you know, none of the cringy handshakes on stage, people shaking in their, f in their boots, you know, none of that. You just had boring presentations scripted. And what the heck was up with the Summer Games Fest? I think this is one of the biggest parts why it sucked so much was because you just spread your announcements way too far, you know? For two months, instead of giving us three awesome days of announcements, you're just giving us two months of nothing and eventually just announced one or two cool things sprinkled in. But as a whole, it's just nothing. Ubisoft gave us a sequel to Mario and Rabbids. Who cares? Like, I'm sure people who people who play these games like Just Dance 2, you know, Mario Rabbids still getting a sequel. You know, those are the games that people obviously play, but come on, those are not the announcements that a lot of people will be excited to talk about. Gearbox only had cinematic trailers and they were talking about movies. Bandai Namco just had an interactive video game about the Dark Pictures franchise that is just a former shell of Until Dawn. Capcom, what the heck? They had like an expansion and two game announcements. That's it. And then they had an esports. They closed out with an esports. Come on. And I know we had the Covivi and everything. I don't think E3 can come back from this, honestly. Sony ditched. EA ditched. People are just trying to do their own com own digital events. And, you know, if this, if you know how in history there are like these moments that mark a total collapse of something, I think this is it for E3 because you've never had an E3 that was this bad. You always had some cool announcements, you know, even when Sony didn't come to the 2019 one, you still had some worthy things to talk about. But this year, it was just a drought out of nothingness and i think pairing it up with jeff Keeley's summer's game fest is the death blow to e3 how was the worst thing that could have come out of 2020 has come over to 2021 i mean jeff Keeley had to get his face in there somehow because enough because winter wasn't enough with the game awards and, and then we had the take two conference that was just a panel over an hour 
talking, no game announcements, talking about diversity and how inclusion is needed in the workplace. And they had an entire over an hour discussion of diversity, of why we need more black people. There was one guy that was saying how, there was a black guy saying, when I tell people I work in the games industry, when I tell that to kids, their eyes go big because they don't think a black guy can be in the gaming industry. That's a freaking lie. What a lie. That is one way to lie to all these people and just to pretend like we're living in this reality where there are these marginalized groups that are kicked out for being different just because they're not white or men. That's such a lie. That's pathetic. And it was obviously helmed by 2K, the director of diversity and inclusion and by the way if that is your job in a company the director or anything to do with diversity and inclusion you are useless congrats you have finished college with nothing worthy and you contribute nothing to society and why did you put that in e3 when people wanted to play games you're probably expecting a gta 6 announcement and you give them a lecture about diversity this is an electronic entertainment expo not a social justice lecture come on what are we doing here this is like i don't i don't think people realize how catastrophic of a year this is and so i'm going to basically close off on saying at least there were some cool games that i saw and i'm going to close off on the positive which is the elden ring which from from software which looks awesome with the world and the creatures i've never played any of their games i've yet to play bloodborne that's on my next to play list so i hope i'm gonna get to that but then also stalker 2 looked pretty cool during the microsoft conference legend of zelda breath of the wild sequel looks great with the entire world in the sky and metroid dread also looks really cool from nintendo come on like that is a 2D Metroid that really looks like a AAA game in a sort of weird way. So at least we had those announcements that really just had some had something to offer. And finally, Nintendo is doing something more than just re-releasing games of their Wii U ports or earlier. So, but yeah, um, I think I think people will not realize how awful of a year this was until years down the line when we have future E3s because I really think this is going to be one of those years where you can really point to and say yeah this is where E3 went down and you know you have more of these people who know nothing about games just coming out of nowhere and cluelessly discussing about this these social issues in society like get out of here man we're just here to play games I also like how the slit game look, or was it silt for PC, you know, the black and white that sort of looked like Limbo during the PC gaming show. So yeah, that was also a worthy mention. But yeah, other than that, it's looking pretty bleak. So to E3, to Summer Game Fest and Jeff Keighley, if you don't have the cringe and you don't have the game announcements, the soul of E3 is gone then it marks the beginning of an end bye bye you three it was nice knowing you 45 p.m <laughs> so this is real dancing <laughs> <laughs>